Amen. How many of us knows victory truly belongs to Jesus? Listen, how many times have you tried to do something in your own strength and you failed? You didn't get the desired outcome that you wanted. But had you left it to Jesus, yeah. you would have gotten the desired outcome. Amen? Amen. Amen. First, give an honor to God and to the man of God that he has placed over this house, my friend and my brother, the Reverend Dr. Joseph Cannon. May God bless you, Doc. And to my good friend, my Bible study buddy, Reverend Calvin, and his lovely wife is here, my other fellow student, uh, and to Reverend Cobbs, who I've just met but heard a lot of good things about. Good to see you, Rod. Good to see you as God well. Bless you. God bless you, you as well. And his lovely wife is here. And to all of you here and watching on live stream. Yes. And to last but not least, my lovely wife. Amen. Hallelujah. My red. <laughs> my ride or die is here. If I say I got somewhere to go, she say what time we need. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. 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 I thank God for her. She's here with me this morning. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I have an assignment to complete, so I'm going to get to the word today. If you would stand with me, if you, if you have your Bibles, and I pray that you do, if you would go with me to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 29. Are we there? Amen. Amen. Let's look at what the word of the Lord says. By the hand of Elash, the son of Shaphan, and Gemira, the son of Hekiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. God wants to talk about this morning, just for a few minutes in your hearing, what to do in difficult times. What to do in difficult time. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. God, we thank you for yet another morning that you saw fit to grow the breath of life into our nostrils. That we may open our eyes to behold a brand new day. Yes, Lord. And for that, God, we are eternally grateful. Thank you for your loving kindness, thank you for grace and mercy. God, we thank you that you are long-suffering with us. We thank you, God, that you are thinking about us when we're not even thinking about ourselves. But God, most of all, we thank you for Jesus and that great sacrifice that was made on Calvary's Hill. We thank you for the blood that was shed that never lost its power. Now, God, speak. Speak a word in this house today. Their lives will be changed and made the better. Yes, Lord. Then, God, once we know better, we pray that you will give us the strength to do better. And, God, when it's all over, when there's nothing left to say and there's nothing left to do, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The writer here is the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet because he often weeped over the fate of his beloved countrymen as a result of their disobedience. He is also referred to as a major prophet. 
Jeremiah is considered to be a major prophet because of, not because he's better uh -huh. than the other prophets, but because of the size of the volume of his writings that he produced. For 40 years, Jeremiah served as God spoke to Judah. But when Jeremiah spoke, nobody listened. He was poor and underwent severe deprivation to deliver the prophecies of God. He was thrown into prison and into a cistern, and he was also taken away to Egypt against his will. He was rejected by his neighbors, family, and friends. Jeremiah stood alone, declaring thus what thus saith the Lord. In the eyes of the world, Jeremiah was a failure. Mm -hmm. But in the eyes of God, he was one of the most successful people of all time. <laughs> Jeremiah endured some difficult times, much like times we are experiencing today. As we are trying to deal with the coronavirus and civil unrest and all that is going on in our government here in America. Jeremiah is writing to the people of Judah, the southern kingdom and its capital city of Jerusalem. He's writing to urge the people of God to turn from their sins and their wicked ways and turn back to God. Now, those of you who have ever heard what God has deposited in me, you know that I like to make the word come alive. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. It's, it's, somebody said, if you want to read a good bedtime story, pick up your Bible. Well, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. I feel like the Bible is full of so much. It's just we sometimes need to make it live so we can understand what it's saying. Here in the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah is writing a letter from Jerusalem to the elders, priests, prophets, and all the people who had been exiled to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. The people were taken captive. They were enslaved. Watch this. This happened after the court of officials and leaders of Judah and all the craftsmen had been deported from Jerusalem. Deported from Jerusalem. The people of Judah are exiled to a place that they've never been to before. And they are experiencing some things that they have never experienced before. Does that sound like something we've been going through here lately? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. The people of Judah don't know what to do. Doesn't that sound like some difficult times? Hmm. Question. What should we as Christians, believers, do when we are experiencing difficult times? The prophet Jeremiah is going to teach us what we need to do. Yes. What does, I, I, I told a message one time about what, what does God have in his hands. Uh -huh. Jesus said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And I gave four P's. I like to do literary sometimes. Four things that start with a P. Today I only have three for you. I'm one short, but y'all are going to forgive me for that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, let's, let's look at the first thing we should do. Look there at Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 5 and 6. Build thee houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and begot sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. 
The first thing we have to do in difficult times, the first thing we have to do is remain productive. Mm -hmm. There are so many churches, Brother Todd, that are closed today. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because we're living in a difficult time, Pastor yeah. Panic. Mm -hmm. And they decided that they would shut their doors. And wait for man no. to create a vaccine. Not God, but man. Life cannot be ground to a halt during difficult times. Uh -huh. We must adjust and we have to keep moving. Jeremiah wrote to the captives in Babylon, instructing them to move ahead mm -hmm. with their lives. Yes. He told them to persevere and to be productive. Jeremiah instructed them to do so because they needed to plan for a very long stay mm -hmm. in Babylon. Yeah. They would not be returning to Judah anytime soon despite Hananiah saying that he would bring the exiles back to Babylon. Yes. In Jeremiah chapter 28 verse 4. They were being told, they're being held captive. Mm -hmm. And they were being told, don't build these houses. Don't do all of this stuff because you're not going to be here long. Mm -hmm. That was a lie. God said, prepare to be here for a while. <laughs> Somebody said when this virus first came out, that when it gets warm, poof, <laughs> it'll be gone. Yeah. Here we sick a year later and it's still here. Matter of fact, not only is it still here, it it's worse. worse now than it was then. Uh -huh. So we have to remain productive. Right? Amen. He said we have to remain productive with God instructing us to keep moving and living our lives in a productive manner. At my church at St. Paul, under the leadership of my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Peter J. Evans, we have been very productive by reaching out to the community to meet the needs of God's people. Yeah. Uh -huh. We fed the hungry and we prayed for the sick and their families. We've been a source of comfort to the bereaved families who've lost loved ones to this deadly disease. We are being Productive by fighting against bigotry and racism in our community and in this country. Uh -huh. And I know for a fact in my conversations with Pastor Kenny that here at the Gospel Community Church, you all are doing the very same thing. Uh -huh. We have to remain productive. The last thing that needs to shut down in difficult times uh -huh. is the church. Amen. People are upset because they can't go to their favorite restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> People are upset because they can't go to the ball game. Yeah. People are upset because they can't go on vacation. Yeah. Uh -huh. They can't go to the amusement park. Yeah. Uh -huh. But guess what? Gospel Community Church is open. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can come here and get a word for your situation. Yeah. St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church is open. Right. Uh -huh. Come get a word for your situation. There are people who are staying home that are becoming depressed. They said the suicide rates are going up. Come to church. Uh -huh. Come to church. Find you a church. If your church is closed, find you a church that's being productive. Yeah. Amen. And go. Amen. At least turn on live stream. Yeah. Amen. God has created other means. For us to be able to get a word. Amen. God's word will live forever. Amen. And it's our job to continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Then, look at verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have 
peace. Mm. Wait a minute, preacher. Mm. You trying to tell me we have been taken captive. We have been enslaved. And now you telling me to find peace there? Yes. I'm not telling you that. God is telling you that. He's telling you to find peace in the middle of this pandemic. Uh -huh. He's telling you to find peace in the middle of racism and bigotry. Peace. Listen to what he says. We have to pray for peace. First Thessalonians 5 and 17. Pray without ceasing. Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we enter into difficult times, we should pray diligently and move ahead doing whatever we can rather than giving up. Amen. We need to stop. Uh-oh, this is where I get in trouble. <laughs> Go ahead. And, I'm, and, I, and I know I'm home. I'm in Oakland. <laughs> I, I know where I'm at. And I'm going to say it anyway. We need to stop protesting. Make it quiet. Make it quiet. Go ahead on. I love it when you're quiet. I got you. <laughs> we need to stop protesting. I'm going to tell you what I mean. We need to stop protesting because most of the time when we're protesting something is because we're angry about something. We just celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King did not protest. He demonstrated peacefully. Mm -hmm. We need to stop protesting and demonstrate peacefully. We're going to talk more about that. Watch this. We need to learn how to control our anger by channeling that energy and other emotions such as love mm -hmm. and peace. Mm -hmm. It takes more energy to be angry. It sure does. And to do the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. It takes nothing to show love and kindness and to demonstrate peacefully. Now watch this. All of the protests that we've been seeing lately have led to riots. <laughs> now there were some who didn't believe that at first. Until recently, earlier this month, there was some protesting going on in our nation's capital. Mm -hmm. No National Guard there. Just the regular folk who worked there, the, the, the Capitol Police were there. And quickly, they got out of hand. Uh -huh. Now had that been a peaceful protest, yeah. maybe some of that stuff, a peaceful demonstration, I should say, mm -hmm. that stuff wouldn't have happened. Had they listened, to the cries of our people way back when. Mm -hmm. When Martin Luther King locked arms with his brothers and sisters in arms and walked to demonstrate peace, had they listened back then, mm. maybe January 6th wouldn't have happened. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Peaceful demonstration. Rosa Parks, she didn't go upside the man's head when he told her to get to the back of the bus, nope. she just simply sat down. Sat down. Yeah. Uh-huh. And refused to move. Peaceful. Mm -hmm. What do you think would have happened had she turned by body and began rioting? She wouldn't have lived as long as she did. That's right. Stop protesting and demonstrate peacefully. When you say preaching, I don't know how to do that. Pray and ask God how to do it. We need to pray for peace. We need to remain productive 
Then we need to pray for peace. Then the third P is, look at verses 8 and 9. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 8 and 9. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams which he caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in the name I have not sent them, saith the Lord. You have to remain productive. We have to pray for peace. Then we can entertain or fall for false propaganda. Propaganda is information, ideas, or rumors deliberately spread widely to help or hurt a person, group, movement, institution, or nation. Let me tell you, let me make it real for you. So, you have the children of Israel taken captive, mm -hmm. and you have false prophets in the midst of them saying, don't build that house. Don't plant those gardens because you're not going to be here long. Mm -hmm. They were lying to them, trying to get them to stop being productive mm -hmm. and to stop praying for peace. God says, don't fall for the propaganda. Uh -huh. Watch this. The Washington Post reported in an article that y'all's president, ex-president, <laughs> y'all's ex-president, <laughs> made 30,573 false or misleading claims or statements. In other words, he lied. Uh -huh. 30,573 times in his four-year tenure as president of these United States. He lied. <laughs> 30,573 times. Uh -huh. Y'all's president, ex-president. Watch this. He started from the very beginning. Uh -huh. As soon as he was inaugurated, he said, this is the largest crowd to ever come to an inauguration. Did y'all see that parade group? There was nobody there. <laughs> when I looked at when President Obama was inaugurated, you couldn't see the ground around the mall. Uh -huh. When Donald Trump was inaugurated, you can have a picnic, throw out your blanket, <laughs> and nobody, and, and social distance <laughs> at his inauguration. Uh -huh. It was a lie. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then he says things for shock value. He said, I can walk out on 106th Street in New York, shoot somebody, and never lose a book. He said that. Uh -huh. He said that. He said, now this is the one that's going to get you. I've done more for Christianity than Jesus himself. Uh -huh. <laughs> he said that. False prophets, heresy among the people. Uh -huh. Not only is he among the people, you have to be careful because sometimes they can be your leader. Yes. He says he took photo opportunities. I remember <laughs> he went to a church and he positioned himself in front of the church's signage. Position 
himself just right so you can see. Propaganda. And he held up his Bible. But it was backwards and upside, upside down. down. Uh huh, like Hitler. <laughs> Propaganda. Mm -hmm. He continued to hold rallies. Even after uh, he had won the presidency. Go ahead, go ahead. He's used propaganda the whole time he was campaigning yes. to be POTUS. Mm -hmm. And he used it his whole four year tenure as POTUS. Go ahead. Propaganda. Yes. Anything and everything he could say or do, he did. He did. He spoke ill of the dead, and this is why he lost in Arizona. <laughs> he talked about a U.S. hero, John McCain, who had passed away. He said something so terrible about him. I'm not even going to repeat it. Nope. <laughs> but it was propaganda. Yes. He called our U.S. military people losers and suckers. Propaganda. And that's who was in the office and president of these United States and leader of the free world. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the one who was making laws, who was telling the people of the United States what they could do and they can't do. Yes. False prophets. Yes. But I'm here to tell you today uh, uh. that I know a man. Uh -huh. Who lived in difficult times. Uh -huh. And his name was Jesus yeah. the Christ. Yes. Jesus is our example, Reverend God. Uh -huh. Of how to handle everything and everybody. Yeah. He endured yeah. some of the most difficult times anyone has ever lived through. Even though Jesus was persecuted and ridiculed, yes. even though Jesus went into his own yes. and they received him not, uh -huh. even though nobody believed that he was the Son of Man, yes. that he was the Messiah, yes. that he was the one who should come, yes. nobody believed him. He still remained productive. He was productive with the reason of Christianity seemed to spread into every corner of the earth. He was productive because he taught and poured into the 12 ordinary men until they became visions of men. Then Jesus, along with these 12 ordinary men, into the world, into every nation, uh -huh. and they turned the world upside down. Even though Jesus was betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver, yeah. Jesus still prayed for peace. He said in the garden, let it be thy will.
my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, until the flesh was torn uh, from his body. Uh, he was covered in blood, uh, but still he knew uh, there was something that he had to do. Uh, he remained productive uh, when he picked up his cross. Uh, he put it on his back uh, and he fought uh, and he pressed his way. Uh,
ministry. Peacefully. Amen. And then he says, don't fall for propaganda. He says, turn off the TV sometime. Stop looking at the news every single day. Spend some time with me. Amen. And you'll know what to do in difficult times. Mm -hmm. He says, trust me. You say it all the time. We trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Uh -huh. And we lean not to our own understanding. But the first thing we do when we get in a jam is call somebody else on the phone. And we treat Jesus like he's a spare tire. Mm -hmm. How many of us thought about that spare tire in our trunk this morning? Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. <laughs> but had you got a flat out here on seminary. Yeah. The first thing that would have came to your mind, I got to spare time That's right. in my trunk. Let's not treat Jesus like that. Uh -huh. Let's think about him before we even get out of our beds to get in our car. Say thank you, Jesus, for another day. Amen. And it's a day that I'm going to do something to bring glory to your name. In spite of COVID-19. Uh -huh. yeah. In spite of racism. Yeah. Bigotry. Yeah. In spite of what's going on in our government. Your name will be glorified throughout it all. Amen. And forevermore. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.